Okay, so I asked you for the first night to do these 30 questions on what do you know in algebra. And really the point of this sheet is just so I can see how you are solving for x. So you're going to hand this in to me so I can actually see the, what you do, okay? So I did ask you to write the question, write this, do this on a separate sheet of paper, so write the question down. And for the simple ones, you don't really have to show me a lot of work, but as you get down into the more complicated ones, I do want to see what you've done. Okay, so hopefully in number one, it, hopefully it wasn't too difficult. You want to get x by itself, so divide both sides by 3. Um, down here, you in number six, you want to get x by itself, so take the negative 3 over where it becomes positive. Sorry, the black is from my marker in the board. I haven't gotten home yet since you've seen me. All right, so, and as they go down, they get a little bit more complicated. Um, I thought I would start with number 17. If there are others that, I, so I'm going to pick. If you were in class the second day after I gave you this, I would say to you, which ones do you want me to look at for you before you handed it in? But since it's your home day, um, I'm going to guess which ones you're going to want me to look at. Okay, and if I don't guess one that you need me to look at, well, then feel free to ask in the messenger group. Um, ask on Teams or come see me. I'm always in my room at lunchtime um, and you lots of times I'll be here before homeroom in my room. Uh, it just depends on department meetings and stuff like that in the morning, okay? But you can come find me. All right, so let's start with 17 for now. The reason I picked 17 to start with was because of the negative in front of the bracket. The negative in front of the bracket um, is really a negative one and so you have to get rid of the bracket by multiplying through by that negative 1. So it'll become 5y minus negative 1 times 2y will be negative 2y, and negative 1 times positive 3 will be negative 3 equals 12. Now the bracket's gone, so you can put these two terms together, and you can take your negative 3 over here. So this should give you 3y. When you take the negative 3 over, you really end up adding it. So you get 3y equals 15, and hopefully now you can finish that without me. All right, the next one that is similar is number 21. So again, there's a bracket, and this time it's a negative 3 in front. So you're going to do exactly the same thing. And sorry, I always cross my 7s. It's a French thing. So it'll be 17 minus 3 times x will be minus 3x. And negative 3 times 11 will be negative 33. And usually it's the negative on the 33 that people screw up on. So just double check that. And now it just becomes like all the other ones. Now take your x's to the same side, your terms without x to the same side, and solve. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to solve this. I'd probably bring this over here even though I hate my x term to be negative. So it'll be 17 minus 33 is equal to negative 7x plus 3x, and I'll leave the rest for you to do. Okay, so that's number 21. So on the sheet, um, the next ones I think that are probably going to cause you issues are the ones with fractions, because people tend to not like fractions. Number 23 and number 24 are probably okay, because it's just one term with fractions, so is number 25. 26 has two terms with fractions, but they're both uh, fours on the bottom. So the one I'm going to start with is number 27. Okay, now when you have fractions, the easiest thing to do, especially for all of you that are not fraction lovers, is to get rid of the fractions. And there are two ways you can get rid of the fraction. One way is to find what's the com lowest common denominator of all the fractions that are in the uh, equation. So a third and a half, the lowest common denominator would be six. And so once you have that, then there's two things you can do. You can either multiply every term by six, or you can change all the denominators to six. If you multiply every term by six, it means this gets multiplied by six, this gets multiplied by six, and this gets multiplied by six. So six times a third is six over three t, and six over three is just two t. Okay, 6 times a half, or 6 over 2t, well, 6 over 2 is 3. And then 6 times 10 is 60. And now you just solve for t. Okay, so that's if you multiply every term by the common denominator. I'm just going to go back to the original question. 
and show you how it doesn't matter if you do that or if you change to a common denominator. So the common denominator here would be 6. So 1 third is what over 6? Well, it's 2 over 6. So this will be 2 over 6t. And 1 half is what over 6? Well, it's 3 over 6 is 1 half. And then you also have to do the 10. 10 is what over 6? Well, it's 60 over 6. And then once you have everything over 6, you can just cancel them out. And look, lo and behold, you have exactly the same as what I have here. So that's why it doesn't matter which way you do it. You'll end up in the same spot with 2t plus 3t equals 60 and solve for t. Okay, so that's number 27. You do need to finish it. I can't give you everything. Number 28 is similar. It has two different fractions. And again, what's the lowest common denominator? Well, there's a 3 and a 4, so I'm pretty sure the lowest common denominator should be 12. So your choices are to write every term as a fraction over 12 or multiply every term by 12. And again, just like in the last um, question, you'll end up at exactly the same spot. So it makes absolutely no difference to me which whether you do these by multiplying by the common denominator or by changing them to the common denominator. You choose, I can handle it. Okay, so if we multiply everything by 12, 4 times 12 is 48 over 3, and 48 over 3 is 16x. You got to do the 5 times 12, so 5 times 12 is 60, so this will be minus 60. 3 times 12 is 36, so this is 36 over 4x, but 36 over 4 is really 9. And then minus 4 times 12 is 48, so minus 48. Okay? If you had changed everything to the lowest common, uh, to over the common denominator, it would end up being, uh, the, what do you multiply by 4? It would end up being 16x over 12 um, minus 60 over 12 equals 9x over 12 minus 48 over 12. And again, you would just cross out the 12s, right? So to get this over 12, you need to multiply the 3 by 4, so you have to multiply the top by 4, okay? And then once you get to this spot, now just solve for x, okay? So you finish it up, solve for x. Number 29, the same. What is the common? There's, again, another way you can solve this, and I'll talk about it in a minute. But what's the common denominator? It's 15. So you could multiply both sides by 15 because there's only one term on each side. So when you multiply this by 15, it becomes 15 over 3, x plus 2. And 15 over 3 is 5. So you get 5 times x plus 2. And here the 15s just cancel. So you get x plus 6. The other option you could have done here, because there's only one term on each side, is you could have cross-multiplied. So you could have multiplied this term by 15, so 15x plus 2, and then this term, these two terms together, 3x plus 6. And then in the end, if you divide everything by 3, you end up with what we have here, okay? And then solve for x by multiplying through. All right, and the last one, number 30. Again, what's the common denominator? It is 12. So again, either change everything to something over 12 or multiply every term by 12. So maybe this time I'll change everything to something over 12. So if I want to change this term here, which is over 4, to something over 12, I'd need to multiply the top and bottom by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12, and 3 times h minus 5. I need to change this term to something over 12 as well. So h as something over 12 has to be 12h, right? Because then the 12s would cancel and give me back h. Equals nine, uh, 3 to change to something over 12. I have to multiply by 4, so I need to multiply the top by 4 as well. It would be 16. And then I need to multiply the 3 by something so that it, when it's over 12, it's still equal to 3. So that would end up being 36. Okay, once you have everything over 12, you can cancel out the 12s. That is identical to multiplying every term by 12, because if I multiplied this by 12, the 4 would go into 12, and I'd have left 3h minus 5. Multiply this by 12, it would just be 12h. Multiply this by 12, the 3 would go in, and I'd have 4h, 4 times 4h, that would be 16h. Multiply this by 12. 
okay? It would be exactly the same, and now solve for h, okay? So do all of these to hand in the next day I see you.